Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another new week, and today we begin a new unit. And that unit is going to be discussing God's law in the Ten Commandments. And you're going to need your workbooks. We're starting on Lesson 15, and that begins on page 57. Lesson 15 on page 57. So, over the next few weeks, you and I are going to be looking at the commandments. We're going to take one each day. There will be a shorter worksheet for each of the commandments, and then the following day, your memory work will be that commandment, and what does this mean? We've broken it down into really some bite-sized segments uh, so that we can make sure that we get the work done and that you can stay on top of things. This is just a reminder again that you must do your daily work here. You must commit to it and get it done by the due date. Was kind and let some of you go back through and make up the work that you had not completed since the beginning of this quarter. Uh, but you need to stay on top of it. That's, that's all there is. Uh, eighth graders, those of you heading toward confirmation, uh, this is the time for you to buckle down and make sure that you are getting your work done. So when that examination and confirmation comes around, you are going to be ready to stand before the members of your churches and say to them, this is what I believe and this is how I'm going to live my life. So that's a little pep talk for this morning uh, as we begin Looking at the commandments, we're going to start with how God gave his law. How and why did God give us his Ten Commandments? And actually, we're going to review really quickly. We're going to go back to Lesson 1. Lesson 1 that we had where we talked about who God is. We remember that God shares his information about us in, he, in the natural law. Remember? Natural law, as opposed to revealed knowledge, natural knowledge, the things that we learn from nature. Uh, and we use this very passage from Romans when we talked about God providing information about his law in nature. Romans 2, 14 and 15 says, Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts. Their conscience is also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them, and at other times even defending them. So, we know that God wrote his law from the very beginning, into the hearts of people. So God wrote his law into the hearts of people at creation. And when he creates each and every person, those requirements of the law are written in their hearts. Remember the special name we gave to that voice inside of all of us that says we know when we're doing wrong, even though no one has had to teach us that? That's right. It's our conscience. So, God wrote it into our hearts. You could put slash conscience at creation. But people can not listen to their conscience. They can, can stop hearing that voice inside of them. Uh, so, God wanted to make his law clear. And when he brought the children of Israel up out of Egypt and called them to be his very own people, this is what he did for them. Deuteronomy 10.4 says, The Lord wrote on these tablets that what he had written before, the Ten Commandments he had proclaimed to you on the mountain, out of the fire on the day of the assembly, and the Lord gave them to me. Remember that God had called Moses up onto Mount Sinai. And while Moses was up there on the mountain, he received from God the Ten Commandments. 
and they were written on stone tablets, big pieces of rock. That's where the word of God was written by God's very own hand. So we see that God made it clear and established not only just in a person's heart, but also it was written so that people could look at it and study it and remind themselves of what God's law had to say. And the reason that God gave his law is really twofold. There are two reasons. We're going to go back to the book of Romans to see where uh, what God says in Romans 3 concerning why he gave the law. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight, but by the works of the law rather. Through the law, we become conscious of sin. So we say that the law serves as a mirror. Like when we look in the mirror and we see our face, we know what we look like. Can't change what we look like. It's just who we are. So the law shows us, uh, the law is a mirror that clearly shows us and reminds us of our sin and our need for a Savior. So when the law comes into our lives, what it shows us, acting as a mirror, is that we are sinful, that we disobey God, we break his commandments, and therefore we need a Savior. The second purpose of the law, and the second reason that God gave his law, we find in Psalm 119. We're going to read verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. So, if we're in the dark and we have a lamp or a light, we realize that can help us see it's our guide. So, the law also serves as a guide to instruct us how to please God in our new life with Him after we know Him and rely on Him as our Savior. So after the law shows us our sin and that we need a Savior and the Holy Spirit creates faith in our hearts, we know then that the law shows us how we are to live. It teaches us the way that we are to go. Now you might ask, why should we obey God's law? First, there's one reason why we don't. Galatians 3.11 says to us clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God, because the righteous will live by faith. So, we certainly do not do it to be justified before God. Remember the definition of justified? Justified, we break that word apart, into just as if I had not sinned. God declares us not guilty, makes it just as if we hadn't sinned. That's what justified means. We can't justify ourselves by the law because we break it. We don't keep it. We don't do the things we're supposed to do. We do the things we're not supposed to do. So we can't be justified before God and earn our righteousness and earn our way into heaven. But rather we obey the law because of what's found in 1 John 4, verse 9, 19. We love because he first loved us. So, we obey the law rather out of love for God, who loved us and saved us first. Will obe willing obedience is the believer's grateful response to the love and mercy of God. So God gave his law, it's in us, it's recorded in his word, so that we will turn to him when we see our sins and our need for our Savior, to be guided in our faith life by his law in his word, because we can't earn our way into heaven. 
but rather we do it because we love God, because God first loved us. Now, when we look at those two tables of the law, or tablets of the law, you'll see this little picture down here. For some reason, every artist has made these uh, two tablets of the law with these nice curved top pieces. Uh, really what the two tablets of the law mean is there are two sections. There's the first section that talks about God, and that's the first through third commandments. The second section talks about the people that we live with and who surround us. Uh, but we can summarize those commandments, uh, those two tablets, very easily. And Jesus does that. And we're going to read from Mark chapter 12. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, Jesus answered, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. So we see that Jesus himself said the first table of the law can be summed up in the words, love the Lord. The second table of the law can be summed up in the simple phrase, love your neighbor. And there's one word in those two sentences that could sum up the entire law. You know what that one word is. Can, God's commandments can be summed up in the simple word love. Love God, love your neighbor. Love the Lord, love your neighbor. However you want to write it in there. But the summary of God's law is love. So in the next few weeks, we are going to continue to look at and study the commandments. First, we're going to see how we can love God because he loved us. And then secondly, how we can love each other. How we can love those people who are around us. So we now know how and why God gave us his commandments. And that is our lesson for today. Make sure that you complete the worksheet that goes along with this. These worksheets, once again, are short and simple. This will not take you forever to get done. But just do it. Think about it. Go in. Take it. And it's done. So it'll be due tomorrow. And tomorrow, then, we'll begin our study of the first commandment. Until then, take care. And I hope you have a really great rest of the day. See you tomorrow.